Welcome in Bobcat fans to the first week of the 2022-23 Frostburg Sports Awards. We're kicking things off with our coach of the week, Eric Wagner from football as they picked up a 21-7 win over American International in the season opener. Coach, it's your first win as a head coach. It's the first win for your new coaching staff for this 2022 team. How do you feel about this win? What are some of your takeaways from it? Um, biggest thing is that it's the first win for the football team also. Um, Oh, oh, not going to ever take, you know, turn down wins, that's for sure. Um, we could have played better, thought we should have played better in some spots. We got to eliminate some mistakes, mental mistakes, turnovers, um, penalties, and, and those aspects on both sides of the football. Clean up some spots. Um, but for a first game, I think the execution level and, and, and areas and for the majority of the game was what we were looking for. One of the strong points for you guys was your running back room of Josh Maxwell, Sean Aaron, and, and Evan Branch, mainly the three guys that racked up over 250 rushing yards between them and really seemed like that was the key point to beating AIC was getting that rushing attack going. You got to be happy with those three guys in the backfield where it seemed like when we were watching and statting the game that you could take any one of them out and the next guy could step up and give you the exact same thing almost and you never lost a step between any of them. Yeah, for sure. That's been our plan since spring. Um, those three guys kind of emerged in the spring as, as our best guys in the backfield. Um, they took it the next step and all three of them came into camp in, in excellent shape, uh, slimmed down some, got stronger. Um, so we knew that was going to be a big forte. Part of that being with our offensive line, being a veteran group of guys that we can line up and those guys are going to move people and our backs know where they need to go with the football. So um, that was, was was a big point. And that's been a big point all, all camp and those guys. Um, it should look the same. If they're doing it right, it should look the same no matter who's in. Um, and we just got to continue to develop them. Um, they're, they're all, even though, you know, Maxwell being a senior, he's still kind of um, young in his Frostburg career of getting a lot of touches and Evan and, and Sean Aaron, obviously, too. So, um, you know, the plan is to keep those guys rolling and, and, and keep them going throughout the year. You also with mentioning the rushing attack. You can never forget about the offensive line, the guys that kind of get down and dirty um, to pave the holes for them. So I want to give a shout out to them as well. And the receiving core obviously was a big question mark from the outside coming into the season, losing pretty much all the production from last year. But Max Davis, Jordan Marcucci, and Donnell Milligan all pretty much stepped up and really seemed like you didn't lose a lot from last year's group into these new guys. Well, that's the beauty of college football. you got to put new guys in every year. Um, Donnell has played before and has the experience, so we knew in the spring he's going to kind of be our veteran guy. Max has always been on the verge of a breakout season. Being a punt returner for us last year I think was really huge for Max um, because it allowed him to get some of that playing time and, and get his feet wet there. Now he's starting to show what he can do as a receiver. And, and uh, Jordan's been a talent since he's been here, um, and, and we knew we just needed to get um, – Marcucci out on the field and, and um, you know, watch and see what he can do, and, and it's been a great asset for us. Defensively, a real big story of the game, only allowing AIC to get seven points. Really, the, the defensive backs were, were kind of the story of the game. Got your guys three interceptions. Wylan Harrick was the MEC Defensive Player of the Week with his two important picks um, at that very when AIC was driving, made two big plays, and also A.J. Felton making a big leaping grab in the first quarter. But as a unit, that group really seemed to lock in, and they didn't really allow AIC much aside from the one drive where they scored where sort of a bend-don't-break mentality, but they really kept everything in front of them. Yeah, I was, I was extremely impressed. Um, we needed to lean on the defense a couple times after some of the turnovers um, early on, and those guys responded. Um, would like to see them play a little bit better in that scoring drive and get get off the field there, though. But uh, Wyland's one of those guys. We talked about some of the guys that showed up in spring ball. Wyland was all over the field in spring ball, and we knew we had something um, with him there. Um, did a great job, played played some QB in high school, so playing that, that deep post position helps out, kind of being able to read eyes and break on it. And, and AJ's been a good football player for a long time. Um, you know, matching the turnovers defensively was, I think, extremely important in the outcome of the game. Um, and then a lot of the other guys, you know, whether D-line, linebackers, um, you know, they, they did their assignments. They may not have had the, the multiple interceptions or the big plays here and there, but they were extremely solid, holding them under 100 yards rushing, um, holding them under 300 yards total of offense. Um, now we just got to get our pass rush cranked up, and, and I think we'll be um, much, much better defensively from that standpoint. You certainly do look at it, and while there weren't any sacks in the game, uh, quite a few hurries, especially from Luke Freeman, and then uh, I think you see Holmes had one on the other side as well, so not quite getting there, but certainly putting on some pressure. Looking ahead to this upcoming weekend, um, the first Saturday game of the year for us at home against West Virginia State, 
in their own right, picked up a pretty impressive win against Shippensburg, 29-6 um, victory for them. Last year was a pretty close game, all things considered, 35-21, to a two-score game. Looking ahead to this year, obviously two new teams, a different matchup. What's sort of, you know, your, your look ahead? We're obviously very early in the week. you got a lot of prep to do, but, you know, scouting them a little bit, what's sort of, you know, what are your expectations? Well, I think it's impressive any time a team can play, uh, like State played Chippensburg last year and, and lost that game, and then they came back this year, played them again, and, and had a very um, resounding victory against them and, and watching them on film and everything. Um, they're a different team than what they were last year. Uh, we've talked to our guys. They're physical extremely physical team. Um, they're going to come out and hit you offensively, defensively, and I think that's what they did to Shippensburg. Wore them down. Shippensburg started making mistakes at the end of the game. Um, they got a fast defense. They're, they're back in. Guys can run. Um, they get after the QB. They got after Shippensburg's QB and got after the offensive line. Um, obviously, the quarterback is back. Um, he's a playmaker last year, still a playmaker. Um, they got a stable of backs too, and, and they got a couple big time receivers. So some guys, some guys that can stretch the field, and some guys some with heights. So um, we we knew going into the season. Obviously, this, the the schedule doesn't sneak up on you, but we knew going into the season that. Um, this this is a, for opening game in the MEC. It's going to be an extremely difficult game. It's going to be a tough physical game. Um, we just have to continue to eliminate our mistakes, and we got to be able to uh, build on what we did last week. Well, Coach, thank you for coming on today to talk to us. I want to congratulate you on getting your first win as head coach. Hopefully, we'll see a lot more this year, but um, certainly congratulations on that, and thank you for taking time to talk to us today. Appreciate it very much. All right, next up, we'll be back with our Male Athlete of the Week, and it's Caleb Barhanu from Cross Country, so be sure to stay tuned. Back on the Frostburg Sports Awards with Caleb Burhanu from Men's Cross Country. Had a really nice weekend at the Piper Alumni XC Challenge at Shippensburg. Caleb, pretty good race for you in your first collegiate race. What were your, some of your thoughts on, on your performance that you had? Um, I was really happy with it. The whole day leading up to the race was really nice. Um, I used to get nervous before races. This time it didn't happen. I was just excited, ready to go out there and race with my team. Now, something a little bit different about this race was it was raced at night across the campus of Shippensburg. Was that any kind of different for you with, you know, in terms of your preparation or your running or, you know, was a little bit of motivation to be able to run through some of the night lights and, you know, not have to worry about the sun in your eye or anything like that? It does have its pros and cons. Um, one of the cons is that the entire day you're just thinking about the race and nothing else. You're like in class thinking about what's going on, not like paying attention. That's not, that's pretty big con. And um, the pros is that you can, your diet is really nice. So you can eat, you have to eat around three hours before you race. And that's really easy to do when it's really hard if you have early day races. Now, you finished in fifth place at the race, fourth amongst collegiate runners. Um, Shippensburg had alumni to finish in first place, but you ended up actually breaking the school record for the meet, which we've been running since, I think, 2009. Were you immediately aware, you know, right after the race that you had broken it? Or obviously, you were just running for your fastest time, but, you know, what was the moment like when you found out that you had broken it? I, I was really happy. Um, me and Justice coach came up to us right after we finished because we finished pretty close to each other. He gave us hugs and he said, fastest Frostburg time on this course, and he said, second fastest time on this course. And that was, that was a pretty cool moment. Speaking about Justice, and he's a team captain this year and um, a junior with no seniors on this team, him and Cole Morgan, the two juniors. Um, we talked with, you know, your guys' video interviews that we did earlier this year about, you know, everyone said he's kind of the leader in the workouts and he likes to push people and, and people like to have him competing with him. Did that motivate you in your race as well, having him that close behind you, knowing A, he's your teammate, but B, you also, you know, a little bit part of you wants to beat him um, and better his time, but also that he's going to support you no matter what. Yeah, um, I was actually behind him basically like 99% of the race and at the last stretch is really when I passed him and yeah, he was a pretty big motivator seeing him right there and knowing through workouts that I'm that much behind him during workouts so I knew I was in a good spot, I knew I wasn't blowing up or anything so that was, that was a pretty good motivator. Well, Caleb, thank you for coming on today to talk to us. You've obviously got your classes and practice schedule coming in, so we really appreciate your time here. Congratulations on your meet. Hopefully some faster times here in the future as well. Yep. Thank you very much for having me. All right, we will be wrapping up our Frostburg Sports Awards with our Female Athlete of the Week, Femke Hofkamp from Field Hockey, so be sure to stay tuned for the end of the interview.
Wrapping up the Frostburg Sports Awards this week from field hockey is Femke Hofkamp as field hockey pulled out two out of three wins this past weekend. Femke, a couple of big results for you guys. How would you kind of judge the team's performance overall and your performance as well? Uh, I'm very happy with the team. I think we came out strong and we're showing that we're here for revenge. Um, last uh, fall, the record wasn't as good and we're definitely trying to improve this this year. Um, and I'm very glad with my team. Everyone's working hard and we're really on a mission here. With those two wins actually tying the team win total from last year and 2019 as well. So, you know, one more victory and you guys can kind of make history here for the last few years at least. Um, last week against Wingate in your guys' season opener, a, a big 4 nothing win. And kind of the story of that game was Emily Bonnevert who had the hat trick. Um, also Paige Leitzel getting on the score sheet as well. But was really a game where, you know, the possession was pretty back and forth, but when it came to chances, you guys really were able to take them and then put a lot of pressure on their goal and really made it work out. Yeah, I think we were very connecting as a team. Um, <clears throat> we had some good in and out passes really working together and uh, Emily was just on it to finish it. Um, I thought, oh, this girl's doing this for a living. Like, and apparently those were her first college goals as well. So I was so surprised by that. And I'm also very happy that Paige got her first college goal. She really deserves that and made it a good one. So. And then on Sunday against Maryville, you got your first college goal, um, as well as picking up an assist and a 2 nothing victory where not quite as comfortable in terms of the result, but you know you look at the chances and creating a lot more than Maryville did and making it back-to-back -back wins and something that this team hasn't seen in a very long time. And, you know, it seems to be that there's a mentality around this team that they can beat anyone and, you know, sort of a, you know, missing link maybe in the past few years, but this team really has seemed to come together. Yeah, I think they worked very hard in last spring and now uh, with new people coming in, all willing to win, uh, we're just very strong. I was very happy with my, uh, with my goal on Sunday, of course, I was waiting on that one and then to get the assist as well, that was a very, very good game and really fought hard as a team and that showed, so we're happy. <laughs> and then against Lindenwood, a very close loss in the end and kind of was, you know, the story of first half was Lindenwood controlled a lot of the play and possession and, and chances and then really in the fourth quarter we turned it up a notch and really tried to go get them, got back to 2-1 and just weren't able to find that equalizing goal. But you look at the result from last year and it was a 4 nothing loss and for this team to, to come within three shot attempts to have only the one goal loss really speaks to the growth and the mentality of this team that, you know, like you said, you're willing to fight every single day and there's a belief around them and, you know, a tough loss, but, you know, almost a, a humbling thing in a way, but, you know, certainly motivating for the rest of the year. Yeah, I totally agree. I think it's good that we learned our lesson early on in the season that we shouldn't be comfortable with just getting all the wins. I think this loss really taught us a lesson that we always need to come out strong right in the first quarter and not in the second half, you know, because we just couldn't get back to it after that 2-0 loss in the first half. Um, so that really was too bad. But I think it was a really good lesson and for the season it will be good and we're coming out stronger. Well, Femke, thank you for coming on to talk to us. You've obviously got a very long trip that you came back from, but we really appreciate your time here. Congratulations on your couple of wins, and we'll be hoping for more for the rest of this year as well. Thank you. Me too. <laughs> All right, well, that will do it for week one of the Frostburg Sports Awards. We'll be back next week with another new coach and a pair of athletes, so be sure to stay tuned and watch that one. And as always, go Bobcats.